If you can answer these two questions every time you cook, then your cooking will always improve. It's one of the most important steps in your journey toward carefree cooking, and many home cooks don't even do it. It's the two most important questions in cooking, today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Yay, 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 yay. It's Tuesday again. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. Of course, we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. You can find the past shows, some, most of them, uh, in the archive on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. Why do we get together every Tuesday? Well, because we're Carefree Cooks. We run around just creating our own recipes and then people run after us, friends and family. You become quite popular when you can cook well. But the important thing is that you learn every time you cook. You wind up creating your own cooking style when you start practicing pro methods and you wind up loving your cooking as well. Here it is, another Tuesday that we're together again. There's Thursdays when we're cooking in my backyard here on the northern neck of Virginia. Then there's Tuesdays where we do some learning, <laughs> where some people call this the lecture class. I don't think to like to think that I lecture, but this is where the nuggets are. Tell your friends to, to come Tuesdays at noon or watch the replay, which gets posted at facebook.com slash chef. Uh, afterwards, because this is where the real nuggets of, of learning come in so that when you do get in the cook in, in the cooking, your kitchen is much better. Um, because let me ask you this. Do you think that there are certain recipes that work and certain recipes that don't work? right? There, there's some books that are good and the recipes and others that you just don't do. Well, if you do think that there are some recipes that work and some recipes that just don't work, how do you know which ones to pick before you start cooking? You don't ever find out until afterward, right? It's a crapshoot. But if you're a carefree cook and you follow dependable and repeatable methods of cooking, then Afterward, you can review what you've just done. You can ask yourself just two simple questions and I guarantee your cooking will improve at least a notch next time. Because recipes, really at the end of cooking a recipe, they only make you ask one question and that's, huh? What? Uh, uh. All right, look, I've got a what am I for you today. Every week we do a true or false or a what am I. So you tell me in the comments section below, what am I? And it sounds like a little riddle. It always has something to do with food. But think about this. Throw away my outer, cook the inner, eat the outer, throw away the inner. What is it this time of year kind of food or ingredient? Uh, tell me in the comments section below, what am I? Um, look, the reason that so <laughs> the reason that so many of us are so different from so many other people, the reason that lifetime members of web cooking classes become carefree cooks so quickly is because of the way that we learn together. And if you're taking the classes right now inside web cooking classes in the curriculum, you already know how different it is. There are no recipes in web cooking classes, not a one. When people ask me what I do, and I tell them I empower the world with the secrets taught in culinary school, brought to home cooks, and they go, oh, tell me one of your recipes. It is always so hard to explain that there are no recipes, and I get this look of utter disbelief. How can you teach cooking and tell me that there are no recipes? But before home cooks start thinking the way that we do, while they still have that mindset, 
until home cooks start thinking the way the culinary students are taught to think, they just can't imagine cooking without a recipe. And, and you might've thought the same thing also. Maybe you just joined us. You thought the same thing a few days ago, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Maybe you've been with us since 2009 when we started and that's when your whole thought process started to change. I mean, honestly, the reason that Carefree Cooks are so different is the unique teaching approach that I have developed over many years. It's thousands of hours in the classroom, more than a thousand instructional videos that I've produced, changing the lives of tens of thousands of people all over the world on a daily basis. You know, I'm not just a stand and stir guy. I, I don't, oh, look how pretty this is. There's always gotta be a lesson involved. I like to think of myself as an educator. So that's, all the bragging <laughs> you're, you're going to hear me do because I don't like doing that. But I pull that out now because I consider myself a servant to my students. I consider myself a motivator, an encourager, an, an empowerer, a, a, someone who gives out empowerment, whatever that word is. It's the idea that there are dependable and repeatable methods in cooking. And once you can uh, perform them reflexively, then you gain more confidence in your cooking than a book, an author, uh, uh, even a video will ever tell you because it comes from within. And this is the case with just about anything else that you're going to try and learn. There's a method. When you take golf lessons, do they give you a book and tell you to go home and read it? No, you learn how to hold the club. You learn how to swing the club. You learn from the golf pro and work on your technique using a golfing method. Everybody does the method, right? And the more you can repeat the method correctly, the further you're gonna hit the ball. And it feels good when you really make contact. It builds confidence when you do something correctly again and again, over and over again. No matter what you do, golf or cooking, confidence is the key. Confidence is the most important thing in cooking for sure. That's the challenge I see as an educator. How do I instill confidence in someone so they really like doing it and they want to do it again? Because once you have confidence, then your creativity starts to emerge. I've seen this hundreds and hundreds of times. Creativity follows confidence when you're like, wow, I'm really good at this. Let me see what else I can do, right? But creativity before confidence turns the whole thing upside down. Creativity before confidence and skill is really dangerous and, and can be a real mess. This is what I see in the first semester of culinary students. First semester students, they are 100% creativity without any dependable methods to back it up at all. So that's why I always focus on the methods because creativity that is empowered with confidence is where all the new creations come from. Every inspiration comes from a combination of creativity and confidence, and it does not work the other way. You can't be insecure and unsure of your cooking, but still be creative. <laughs> it's a mess, right? You're more likely to be tentative. You're more likely to second guess yourself. So you can't be creative without confidence, and you can't be confident without dependable methods. You got that? But here's the best part. And here's the part that's gonna make it sound so easy. All those excellent new creations that come from your new cooking confidence is what brings pride. Pride, that's gotta be the ultimate goal for me. That's the place that I wanna bring everybody to. I wanna empower you to be proud of what you cook. No matter what you cook, no matter who you cook for, no matter how many you cook for, by the time the plate comes to the table, you should be brimming over with how proud you are to be giving of your love, your time, and your nutrition to yourself and your family. That's powerful. Think about that. Bring in pride to the table. But I also understand that it's sometimes not easy to get to that place. You know, that, I mean, that, that sounds like a far off place to so many people. You're not immediately confident, creative, nor proud. Nobody's born confident, creative, and proud. It's a bit of a journey. 
to get there. But the path to becoming a truly carefree cook can have a lot of twists and turns to it. And it does take a lot of tasks. It takes a lot of skills. It takes a lot of techniques. It takes a lot of methods to learn along the way, but you pick them up as you go. So if you're a curious cook, heck, it's a lot of fun. It's a journey of discovery. But if you lack confidence, oh, it could be a scary journey to take. It's like the Wizard of Oz. If you have no confidence, going through the woods where the witches are. But if you think that the destination is the journey, then you may never realize that perhaps the journey is never supposed to end. Maybe that's really what it's about. It's not getting to a certain place, but the journey is never supposed to end. And if you're okay with that, <laughs> if you could take a deep breath, if you're okay with the idea that you might always be reaching for something new, you might always be looking for discoveries that set you free in one way or another, and you start gathering them like you're filling a toolbox. Then then you're going to be thrilled at what I'm about to tell you because I'm going to show you how to stuff that toolbox with creativity, confidence, and pride. Because you can look at the entire 48-week curriculum in web cooking classes and you could probably choke on the amount of knowledge that is there for you to incorporate into your own cooking. And I know people get intimidated. It seems massive at first. I mean, first there's the cooking methods. There's basic saute, there's roasting, there's grilling, uh, there's braising, there's steaming, there's poaching, there's smoking. Oh my goodness, do I have to learn all of those to be a carefree cook? Oh my goodness, that's a confidence killer. Chef Todd, you brought me here to give me confidence. You just killed it. Then there's all the knife skills, the making of sauces, the eggs, learning how to do pasta dough, uh, compound butters and fat, rices and grains, herbs and spices, salads, salad dressings, baking cookies, pies, cakes, different types of doughs, breads, soups, potato dishes, icings, custards, it goes on and on. Have I scared you enough now? Have I scared the living confidence out of you? I mean, geez, Chef Todd, you put it like that. I think I'd rather take my chances on the recipe not coming out. <laughs> that seems like an awful lot to learn. But here's the thing. You're going to jump past all of that. Whether you're involved in web cooking classes or not, I've got a very simple two question shortcut that's going to help you buzzsaw through every one of these topics. And then when you put it all together, it is going to give you that chef level repertoire of methods, bring you the confidence, creativity, and pride that you've been looking for. Because no matter which one of those 48 topics I just reeled off, you might be exploring only one of them. Maybe you're trying to figure out how to saute scallops correctly or, or how to make a great garlic butter. No matter what it is, there are just two questions you need to ask yourself every time you cook. And if you know what to ask, and if you know what you're trying to accomplish, and if you're honest with yourself, you got to be honest with yourself with the answer, then there's no doubt in my mind that your cooking is going to improve every time you cook. And if you do this, what I'm about to tell you, if you do this five to seven times a week, then you can knock out each and every one of the skills that I just reeled off because you'll know when you got it. You'll know when you got it down pat and when you can move on to something else. The confidence comes quickly when you're learning, when you're learning something new and you get it. And so you compare this approach of building confidence in methods, compare this to using faulty recipes, which, which is like a treadmill, yeah, is never getting off the recipe treadmill. Recipes, they really make you relearn cooking every single time you lose, uh, use one because they're all different. But the methods never change. No matter what you're cooking, the method stays the same. So here it is. Here are the two questions to ask that are really so simple, but so few people do this. And this is the key to learning. You cook something, you look down at it, maybe after you eat it or you're cleaning up, whatever it might be, and ask yourself, what did I do well? Give yourself that pat on the back. What did I do well about this dish? And what could I do better? Be honest with yourself. No matter what you're cooking, at some point, 
you got to stop and ask yourself these two questions. Now think about all the elements of the plate that you just created. What are you proud of? What maybe, you know, maybe your plating or presentation wasn't so good last time and now it is. Stop. Develop the pride. Give yourself the confidence. Hug it. Bring it in close to you. I'm proud of myself. I have just built confidence because my plating has increased. The, the chicken has nice grill marks on it. The sauce is velvety with, without little specks of fat floating on it. Whatever it might be, what are you proud of? What did you do well? Take a moment and enjoy it because being proud is a really strong motivator. And if you're proud of tonight's dinner, I'll bet you're <laughs> going to want to cook tomorrow. See, my mission completed. Proud today, want to cook tomorrow. So savor the pride. Bathe in it. Pat yourself on the back because you did well. But then be honest. <laughs> what could you do next time? And take this to heart because this is where the learning takes place. You can always blame a faulty recipe. Wasn't my fault. Recipe's fault and just move on. Well, that recipe doesn't work. You, you can't blame it on any methods <laughs> because you didn't use any. And if you could, you couldn't because the methods are rock solid. You repeat them every time. So to be fair, you want to see me criticize some of my dishes? Come on, I, I can tell you to be honest with yourself. Look at your dishes. Let's see how Chef Todd does his own. Let's look at a few of my own plates as examples. And I'll show you how I put this into use for myself in my own kitchen. All right. <laughs> my goodness. Can I really do this? All right. Opening myself up a little bit to criticism because I want you to do this the same thing. All right. Now, uh, the question is, do I actually do this? Like, am I just giving advice or do I do this? And you're about to see, I do do this because I can see it. It's apparent to me. Um, let me make an analogy to you. Uh, do you remember either way back being a kid or maybe as an adult, the first time you heard your recorded voice or you saw yourself on a video, a home movie, and you're just, oh, you're horribly embarrassed by it. You just, nobody likes their recorded voice. But then after a while, everybody's got a video camera on their phone. You see yourself in video constantly, and that kind of fear just goes away. So do you think I do this? I do this every night. Yes. I, I, and Heather and I sit down and I talk, uh, I could have done that, and I could have done this. And she'll say, but you did this well. Okay. So with all the experience that I have, <laughs> with the comma and a few letters after my name that I was making a big deal about last, <laughs> last week... Don't you think I still want to improve my cooking? Sure I do. I don't sit at the table and go, well, I've got it. Fork drop <laughs> once again. <laughs> I do things poorly. I do. And I do things well. I do things that make me proud. And I do things that make me want to learn more. And that's the whole idea. What did I do well? What could I do better? The two questions you need to ask. So you want to play? We got a little time left. Let's look at some of my dinners that, that I've done lately. Um, this is one of my favorites. I do this a lot. And I think this is part of the, this is part of the get dinner done program. These are my cold Szechuan noodles. I did last Saturday night. They're really good. I have a tendency to do this again and again. And there's a lot to be proud in this dish. The colors Look at that, sliced green scallion, right? Contrast of flavors. There's a soy, uh, brown sugar, mirin kind of reduction that I do. So it's spicy, sweet, salty, right? Sweet and salty. Tender noodles, crunchy peanuts as a garnish. I did really well with the flavors and the appearance. I would say, good job, Chef Todd, be proud. The noodles were perfectly cooked because I took them out of the poaching liquid ahead of time, but then I sauteed them. So I I anticipated they were going to get cooked again. Um, they could have been overcooked. If I cooked them fully in liquid and then was sauteing them, they all break apart. They all fall apart, but I was good with that. My knife skills are really good here. Everything looks consistent, cooked consistently as well. That That's what I feel that I did well with my Szechuan noodle dish. By the way, <laughs> the things that you feel that you do well are usually the things that you always do well. They're the things you're comfortable with. They're the things that you're confident in, right? That's what we're talking about. Because once you've got a skill down, like me with a knife, I mean, I, I feel like my knife is the extension of my arm. I've uh, spent so many hours with it. I don't have to worry about knife skills anymore. So when you get a skill down, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And that's more steps along your journey that you never have to go back and take again. 
versus revisiting a recipe. Okay, so with the Szechuan noodle dish, what could I have done better? First, I forgot to dry the beef. After I cut the beef into cubes, I should have pressed it between paper towels, gotten the excess moisture out. Because I didn't do this, then there was a lot more moisture in the pan. Uh, it, it was like a little soupiness when I was uh, browning the, the uh, beef, and it took a lot longer to brown because of all that moisture. So next time, I'm going to dry the beef, and I'll probably get a more crispy brown appearance rather than steaming them. Okay, so it's a fair criticism. I'll remember that for next time. All right, uh, here's one of my favorite dishes also. This is my chicken tikka moor salad. Uh, I think that's also in, anyway. Uh, I feel like I did a great job plating this dish. I've done all kinds of things with the rice, you know, just like a mound of rice on the plate just doesn't look good. I've put it in a separate bowl. That's a little weird. Uh, but it, I found it, uh, forming it in a ramekin. You put hot water in a ramekin, get the ramekin nice and warm, press your rice in there, turn it over and it'll release. So that's a nice plate up. I was confident. I was proud of the way that the dish tasted, the coconut uh, uh, cream and tomato curry was really good. I love the way it looks on the plate, right? It's a pretty thin sauce though. It's when a sauce runs all the way to the edge of the plate. Maybe I could have done something better with that. And as I recall, I should maybe have mounted it with some heavy cream or had some kind of thickening agent, but I think I left the cream out because it was really fatty, uh, but I didn't do anything to thicken the coconut milk. So I needed a thickener. So next time I might go back to the heavy cream. Maybe I'll add half coconut milk, half cream, or maybe I'll add a cornstarch slurry to it. But what could I have done? Well, I could thicken that sauce. It's, it's a little runny. I'm not sure yet, but I'll remember <laughs> next time I'll try and make a mental note. And again, this is how your cooking improves every night. Think of what you wanted to happen, compare it to what actually did happen. Then Try and figure out how to get to where you want it to be, right? Okay, uh, we got a few more minutes. You want to do one more? One more Chef Todd dish? Are you having fun watching me pick apart my own dishes? <laughs> I thought so. Watching me criticize myself. All right. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't happen often, but I'm going to offer this one up. It is salmon with fried rice and a soy, honey, ginger, garlic, and dill marinade that I thickened to make a sauce, okay? Uh, let me go through that again. I made a marinoid, a marinoid a marinade with soy, honey, ginger, garlic, and dill, a marinade. And I know you might be one ahead of me uh, on this one. Yeah, it's obvious, but we need to talk about what I did well first before we cut me up. Let's talk about what I did well. Let's take the pride. Take the pride pill first. It's the sweetest one. Then we'll talk about this burned piece of salmon <laughs> over here. Okay, so what I did well was the sauce was amazing. I, I'm I'm learning more and more about making these soy reductions and I'm learning that sugar can actually be a thickening agent. So soy sauce, brown sugar, uh, sriracha sauce, rice wine vinegar, mirin, beef broth if you want, but reducing that all that down and it, it could take a while becomes a thick syrup. So the sauces I'm making are really amazing and you can see the nice shine on it, right? Nice, a, a shiny sauce without specks of fat is a, is a lean sauce, is a well emulsified sauce. So it doesn't look oily. The sauce has uh, borders to it versus the tikka masala. The sauce stops at a certain point. A sauce with borders is a good thing. It doesn't run all over the place. So I thickened it really nicely. What else did I do well? That fried rice was killer. Okay. It was really light and tasty. Good goodness. I used to order fried rice takeout all the time. And I remember drinking two glasses of water that night. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. It was so salty. The takeout rice. I make a much better one now. Uh, peas, fried egg, uh, red peppers, green onions, man, it was spot on compliment to the salmon. Okay, so now, <laughs> what could I do better next time? First, how about not burn the salmon, Chef Todd? I, you know, I do burn things, it happens, but it wasn't because I walked away and neglected it. What I forgot about was that marinade was there as a lot of sugar in that marinade. 
you are way more likely to burn sugar. So the honey in the marinade made the outside of the fish burn before it ever cooked in the, in the middle. So I had to take it out of the pan and finish it in the oven, something I really don't like to do. So this also has to do with drying the protein off again, like the beef. I should have dried the salmon on a towel, maybe. L leaving the flavor of honey inside, but no actual honey on the outside, and maybe pay a little bit more attention so it doesn't get to that burned point. So that's what I do after I cook. And you should do the same thing. Ask yourself two simple questions. Ask them, as soon as you're done cooking or ask them when you're done eating or as you're pushing the plate away and leaning backward with, <laughs> with that satisfied sigh and pride, take a photo of it. Ask yourself the two questions and look at the photo later. What did I do well? What could I have done better next time? And once you regularly do this and regularly answer what you do well, it goes in your toolbox, right? Now, oh yeah, made the sauce well made the sauce well, made the sauce well, boom, it's done now. That skill is yours. You own it forever. But the things you need to do better next time, those are only the things that you'll be doing well in the future once you conquer them and they will wind up in your forever skills toolbox as well because that's the path to carefree cooking. It's when you actually learn each time you cook. That's why it's in our tenants. I learn each time I cook and it's one of the greatest moments for me as a culinary educator. When I used to ask my culinary students to describe how they made a certain dish and I would tell them, you can't use your notes. Don't look down at any paper. They just had to close their eyes and describe the method. No, 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 no. Don't look at your notes. Don't look at anybody else. Close your eyes eyes and then tell me how you made it because that's what gets them back to the method. That's when I get them turned into method cookers rather than recipe cookers. And they close their eyes. Most often they go, uh, I heated the pan first. Then I put in the olive oil, like they're in some kind of trance or something. And that's what I want. I want you to be in a reflexive trance when you're cooking. But the rule, here's the last rule. Here's a third thing that you could say. The last rule was they always had to end their description with next time I will because next time I will and that's what pushes you toward perfection of the dish. Ask the two questions and that one statement and you'll change your cooking for tomorrow. Not months from now, tomorrow your cooking changes and that's the way you learn. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes replay the whole cooking process in your head, visualize it, then ask yourself the two questions and finish with, because next time I will. And I guarantee you that next time will be a spot even further down the path to carefree cooking. It's just two simple questions, but they are so important to focusing your journey developing the confidence and creativity and the creativity that brings pride in when you cook. That's the final stop that I want to take you to, pride in what you cook. Uh, let's get back to the what am I? Throw away the outer, cook the inner, peel it down, eat the outer, throw away the inner. Uh, that would be a corn cob. Corn on the cob is our little riddle today in the what am I. For those of you that got it right, 10,000 extra web cooking classes points that can be redeemed for uh, an attaboy, I guess. Hey, look, if you know someone who's stuck on that recipe treadmill having to relearn cooking every time they want to open a book, oh my goodness, help them out, please. Like, love, share this video with them so they can start cooking with confidence, creativity, and pride. And speaking of having fun cooking in the summer, you know you got to change your cooking for the season, right? Summer's almost over, and if you're still cooking the same thing, then you need to know the five specific things that I do every year to make my cooking lighter, brighter, healthier, and more appropriate for the summer season. This free class is called Summer Cooking is Cool, and you can choose your class day and time when you go to webcookingclasses.com slash sun. 
So how was today's lesson, huh? Pretty good? I think I'm gonna go take the next few minutes and figure out what I did well and what I could improve upon next time until next Tuesday at noon when we take those next steps toward breaking the Carefree Cooks Code. This is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye everyone.